Hit him with it. LeBron. Hit him with it. Steph Curry. Hit him with it. Michael. I guess that decides it right there. What is up YouTube fam, Robbie C here. Today, we're gonna talk about one of the most controversial techniques in disc golf that is sure to either make friends of your doubles partners or enemies of those who you are playing against. That's right, we're talking about step putts today. A step putt at its core is pretty simple. You are adding momentum to your regular putt when you find yourself outside of circle one. This extra power and momentum that you gain from the step should in theory make it easier for you to make putts from range. The controversy in all of this comes from the actual release of the disc to the foot hitting the ground after the step. And so there are a lot of people out there, if I'm being honest, myself included, who can get really frustrated with people utilizing the step putt in disc golf. But something I want to make sure I'm leaning into as a coach in the disc golf space is that if I know people are going to go out and do this anyways, I at least want to make sure you're doing it effectively and legally according to the PDGA rules. So we're going to break this video down into a couple of segments. First, we're going to talk about where you can step putt. Second, we're going to talk about how to step putt. And then third, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of the step putt overall. So let's jump into the where. The easy answer is anywhere on the course that is outside of circle one. Circle one is the 33 feet or 10 meters that surrounds the basket. The reason for this is that according to the PDGA rules, when you are putting inside of the circle, you must demonstrate balance after your putt is thrown before progressing forward to pick up the disc. This is one of the biggest rules that people get into tournament play struggle with because on shorter putts they're so used to just taking that extra momentum or falling forward on those putts because there's a bit of nervousness but when we start realizing where the power and spin come from on a putt we are able to generate that power without falling over our lie especially when we find ourselves inside of the circle but there seems to be a definite advantage to using your body weight and momentum to guide that forward progress and give additional power to the disc especially when you find yourself near the the edge of circle one. For most people, when they find themselves around 28 to 32 feet, and most of their putts do not have enough power to get there, or they're absolutely slinging the disc up in the air, just hoping that it has a chance to get all the way to the basket. It's not until we develop an extremely solid putt that we find ourselves able to generate the power and consistency to hit the basket, much less make it from the circle's edge. And this is where a step putt absolutely shines. Rather than having all of our putts fall short, adding the step putt into the game gives that easy power and momentum so that when we find ourselves just outside of the circle, then we're able to start hitting some more putts consistently. Bringing us to the reason that many of you clicked on this video and the simple question, hey, Mr. YouTube man, how do you do the step putt? We've talked about this in putting videos in the past, but it seems pretty foolish that often when people are warming up their putt, that they'll start at 30 feet or 35 feet and try to get their putt going for that day. But we noticed that those are a sort of different putt than just having that sort of short putt that we want dialed. These close putts are absolutely crazy critical for us finding success in our putting game. People start trying to learn the step putt from way further back than they need to, which causes them to learn the putt incorrectly. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down why the step putt works and what you're going to be doing during the step putt, and we're actually going to be learning it from inside of the circle. Well, Mr. YouTube man, you said that the step putt can only be used outside of the circle. Are you a hypocrite? In some aspects of my life, I don't know, maybe, but I think most people are. But as for this, I do think that learning a short range step putt will give us the building blocks and momentum so that when we step the putt back 15 feet or 20 feet, we actually still have the same mechanic and we've taught ourselves what the good feel is like and we can progress from there. I'd rather you know what a good or confident step putt stroke feels like rather than a hope and a prayer from way back when. So what's going on in a step putt? The step putt is broken down into a couple of things. First, we wanna make sure that we note our lives sitting right in front of us. We have to note that a legal step putt involves the disc being released from our hand before our plant foot or the foot located behind the lie is released. This often can create a boom boom motion where this foot comes up and the front foot falls forward in such a fast succession that it becomes incredibly difficult to tell did I release the disc in time from the back foot raising or the front foot 
foot hitting the ground. And we'll talk about this in the pros and cons section, but if you become a regular step putter, you better be prepared to hit multiple step putts in a row because if your card mates are smart and your step put looks sketchy, they have the absolute right to call you on a foot fault every single time. So why is a step involved in this throw? Once again, we are trying to use the step to guide momentum and power of our putt straight forward at the basket. That means that when we're doing a step putt, we don't want to go high with the putt because that's going to cause our momentum to move in a upward direction rather than a forward direction at the basket. The back foot is going to catch the weight of your body and put it into the spring that is this front knee of the plant foot. Keeping in mind once again that we want the forward momentum rather than the upward trajectory of pushing high. It's subtle, but the difference between those two jumps is often the difference between your putt going in and going over the basket. One more time, my weight's gonna load back into this foot and you'll even notice that my plant foot rocks a little bit, which means when the weight and momentum comes in, I go up on the ball of my plant foot and from there, I launch myself forward towards the target. Now, what are the hands doing during this process? Now, obviously we can't have a putting video here on the Robbie C channel without talking about today's video sponsor, Disc Dot. Now, don't you worry, internet. I've been seeing so many comments about the Disc Dot seems really simple. I can just use tape instead of the dot. Why would I practice with the disc dot? Because I can't use it while I'm out on the course. And to those kind of responses, I'll simply say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that someone has ruined your day and you feel necessary to try to ruin someone else's. But I'll challenge you that if you really want to ruin someone's day, hit a big putt on their face. And one of the easiest ways to start hitting big putts is by practicing with disc dots. Using disc dots allows you to practice multiple aiming points on your basket without having to leave residue all over the actual chain. So whether you're practicing your brand new spin putt from downhill or uphill, you you can easily move your disc dot around your target so that you know exactly where you should be aiming. It's also worth noting that while you can't have the disc dot out on the course because that would be cheating, these brightly colored dots can be subconsciously imagined on your target while you're out there on the course and you simply let your body take over and throw that natural putt that you found while working on the practice screen with your disc dots. If you wanna start making moves in your disc golf game, especially this off season where practice putting is going to be paramount to finding success in the 2023 season, I suggest heading over to disc.usa.com and grabbing yourself the pair of disc dots so that you can get to the practice screen as fast as possible. Plus, you can use code RCDISCOLF at checkout to save yourself not only a few bucks, but a few strokes along the way. I want to say thank you to Disc Dot for being a huge sponsor of the channel all year long, and I love how easy they make putting feel so that I can step up to the green and know that it's as simple as focus, putt, and repeat. The step putt is going to add some definite power to the throw, and where people can often get confused in the upward trajectory is by bringing their putt to low during this motion. If I bring the putt all the way down here and then also try to bring my body forward, I'm wasting momentum going up and over my disc, which is going to cause inconsistent releases and cause me to have a lot more arm action involved in the throw to try to get the disc to the basket. So for this, I'm going to recommend a lot more of a spin putt vibe. We talk a lot about push putts on this channel and don't worry, next month I'm working with my coach, Mike Strauss. I'm putting together an awesome how to do a spin putt video. So look forward to that one in November. But for the step putt, you really only need the basics of of a spin putt, which involves three key thoughts. The first is connecting the table from my belt loop to the basket. The disc is simply going to be sliding across that table and into the basket. Now, how I'm going to throw that disc is going to involve the wrist action. And this putt, I'm actually going to loosen my wrist a little bit. And when I pull the disc back, I'm going to point this part of my wrist at the target and my hand because of the loose wrist is going to drag a little bit as I point this part of my wrist to the target. So combining those two pieces, I'm gonna put my disc on the table from my belt buckle and guide the wrist up that table at the basket. Leading me to my favorite part of the motion and that is the dramatic finish of stabbing your fingers at the basket. I go back to the 90s film, The Mask of Zorro starring Antonio Banderas and Catherine Zeta-Jones. And Antonio Banderas in that film is every bit of the flash swordsman that I would hope Zoro to be. I imagine all of his moves finishing with some flair and some zest and whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, you can definitely guess that I dressed up as Zoro many a time when I was a kid. To ensure that we're getting the spin and launch from the disc, during the middle part of the throw, we pointed this part of our wrist at the target. At the last moment, as we're injecting the power from the spring of our plant foot knee, we're going to throw the back of our hand and our fingers directly at the target and stay pointed at the target until the disc 
desk comes to rest. It's going to look incredibly dramatic to hold that pose for that long, but I promise you that when you commit and stay stabbed at the target, you're going to find that the disc flies straighter for a much longer amount of time. So putting the hand components together, we're going to put the disc on the table. We're going to slide our pointed wrist up that table, and at the last moment, we're going to stab the fingers at the target. So where do all of these pieces fit together? Let's combine the top and the bottom. I'm gonna bring my hand up and aim my knuckles at the basket or the center chain point on that basket. I'm gonna start lowering the disc as I load weight onto this back leg. Once the disc comes in contact with my belt buckle, that's go time. I'm going to shift into the loaded knee and all at once, I'm going to explode off of this front foot while hitting the slide and stab. Now right here, I'm doing this about 15 feet away from the basket. When I'm getting that motion dialed, I should be coming through and hitting the basket in the center almost every single time. This is once again to get the motion down so that I don't feel like I have to give a ton of power behind it. I'm just feeling out the timing of the throw. This is huge because if I have the timing of the motion down, then I don't have to worry about the power just yet. I can always add power later, but if I have the right skeleton of the timing, it's going to be easier to add the power without losing accuracy as I push back into technical illegal step putt range. Wow, I ran out of breath so fast on that one. I want you to keep doing this motion over and over again, moving back about five feet at a time. And if you ever feel like you've lost accuracy, then stop at that place right there for a little bit until you can dial the accuracy back in. It doesn't matter if we're legally step putting, if it never has a chance of going in, we might as well not use it. Eventually, you're gonna find yourself out at that 33 foot range where the step putt has happened. And because we progressed our way there, the power needed to hit that shot is going to feel a lot easier. But if I had to give you two quick tips on how to generate more power on that putt, the first would be making sure that you're bringing the disc in and sliding it. The longer the putt is, the more hyzer you can put on it because hopefully when you're pulling it, you're getting it enough spin at a low speed that it's gonna stand up and fly a little straight. I would say if you're getting the spin right and you're within 45 feet, you can actually bring the disc down pretty flat, especially on this putt. The second thing that I would focus on is it's a step putt for a reason. Make sure that you're actually utilizing that weight shift to your advantage and springing forward. A lot of times we can focus so much on this initial weight transfer that this is more of a hop rather than the spring forward that we're looking for out of the step putt. But once again, the reason that we built this putt the way that we did starting closer to the basket is so that you would understand the timing and mechanisms of it all before you got to the longer putts where more power was necessary. But most of you watching are not six foot three lanky as all get out and living in Birmingham, Alabama. You're gonna have to mess around with this putt and make a few minor tweaks as you see fit in order to get it to fit your game as best as possible. With that being said, let's close things out with the pros and cons of a spin putt. Let's start off with the pros because I'm a positive guy and I like to lean into that. One of the biggest pros to spin putting is that when you find yourself outside of the circle, you are going to have a much easier way to gain power and accuracy on the throw by simply using your body weight to get the disc there. If you haven't spent the time to develop a natural putting stroke that gets you the power that you need from those longer distance putts, especially just outside of the circle, a spin putt can be an easy correction. There's a reason that most every player on the Pro Tour, the moment that they're allowed to start using their step putt, use it. It'd just be making buckets, y'all. Another pro to the spin putt is that because you have this added accuracy by guiding your momentum to the basket, nine times out of 10, you're going to come in contact with some sort of metal, especially if you spend some time practicing this technique while you're on the practice screen. Whether you splash the chains or jasper it into the front of the cage or get that nice gong sound by rattling it off the band, a well-dialed spin putt either puts the disc in the basket from range or it drops it right next to the basket after you've come in contact with a large amount of metal. And the last pro of the spin putt is that it is indeed legal and it really feels like it shortens the range of the putt by at least three to four feet. But with the pros, we also have to look at the con. If you practice the step putt or even the jump putt without a lot of accuracy, it often can lead to a putt like this. Don't worry, bro. I got this. Jump putt, y'all. That's gonna be a tough comebacker. Putting is without a doubt one of the hardest things in the game of disc golf, and it is a deteriorating skill, which means that if you don't spend time practicing, often you're going to become worse at it overall. So adding a step putt to your game means that you're going to have to add step putt practice to your routine if you wanna be able to step up and use this on the course while having some form of consistency in your step putt. For me personally, I believe that 45 feet and in, I should be able to use my standard putt, and that allows me to have an immense amount of consistency 
accuracy in my game. Because if I come to lean on the step putt as my go-to choice for 33 foot and 34 foot putt, I'm going to become this guy who is a major con to me of the step putt being a part of your game. You guys think I'm outside? Can I step putt this one? Hey, hey, quick question. You guys think I'm outside on this one? You want, you want me to walk it off real fast? I'll, I'll walk, here, I'll just walk it off. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I mean, it's close, man. It's, it's pretty close, but you know what? I won't step this one for you. My genuine thought when people ask me that question, you should just learn how to putt and then you wouldn't have to ask, you just do your putt. But like I said, it does add an immense amount of consistency and even for me personally while shooting this video, I saw how much easier it was to make those 34 foot and 35 foot putts by using the step putt rather than having to put a little extra juice on my normal putt. But the last con of this is going to be in those small percentages of one of the pros that we list. And that is if you airball a step putt, you have so much power and momentum behind the putt that it is going to sail incredibly far past the basket nine times out of ten so you're going to be left with a massive comebacker and often i have seen people with a dedicated step putt have to three putt and they are allowed to step putt every single time because they are sailing the disc so far past the basket but in order for the step butt to succeed you are going to have to full-on commit to give it the height to get in the basket anyway so there isn't necessarily ever a safe option when it comes to the step putt you can't really give it a soft run on a step putt because a soft run Steph putt never had a chance to go in in the first place. So in the end, would I recommend that you pick up a step putt? I think that honestly depends on where you're at in your putting game. If you're really struggling to find that confidence at circle's edge or just beyond, then I definitely suggest checking out a step putt. And who knows, along the way, it may actually teach you that you're a pretty decent spin putter as well, rather than trying to lean on that spush putt that you've tried to make work for years and years. I know for me personally, the step putt probably is never going to be a dedicated part of my game. And that's that's because of how much time and effort I've tried to put into my putting to begin with, so adding the step putt doesn't feel entirely necessary. But as someone who coaches people on the internet, like I said in the beginning of this video, if you're gonna lean into the step putt, I wanna make sure that you're doing it in the right way and as legal as possible, so that way if people try to call you on the foot fault, which unfortunately if the car gangs up on you and multiple people call it, it's not like you can like contest it, so you just have to go with it. You can at least step up on your card and drain that putt in their face again right away. My personal hope is that the PDGA one day will turn circle one into a 45 foot range, which would add a lot of spice out there on putting green. But maybe that's because I'm rude and don't throw far and I want more people to struggle in the putting green. I don't know. You guys tell me. If you find yourself as a regular step putter and you think there's a tip that I left out in this video, feel free to leave it in the comments below so that we can use the comment section to start teaching other people who come across this video in the future. As always, I wanna say thank you for watching and I hope that you get out there and if you wanna test out this spin putt, that it brings you all the success that you're looking for. In the meantime, I hope you have an amazing week and that you can make it fantastic for someone else too. But for now, I'm gonna leave you with the birdie.